Good evening, folks. Triple Crown here coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. This is a round eight summary of the Global War 1939 series playtest number five. And, you know, as I do new strategies and new things, I also learn new things. And I learned something, I think, pretty crucial uh, this round. And, you know, my background is Global 40 and BBR and played a lot with Hilltop Pillbox. And one of the things he always says in the Pacific, the key to the Pacific is the Caroline Islands and the key in the Atlantic is Gibraltar. Well, this map is a little bit different. The sea zones, some of them are three sea zones apart for certain things and some of them are two or it's just different all around and... You know, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. It's, uh, I do love this global 1939 map. And, uh, so anyways, the Carolines is not as important or not as significant, even though it does have a air and naval base, but it is four territories away from hitting Tokyo or Shanghai or Hong Kong or even Singapore. What can you hit from the Carolines? Well, you can hit the Philippines, which is not a bad thing. But um, if you are the ally player, you want to be able to hit multiple targets because that is much more difficult for Japan to defend. And currently the allies are sitting in the Marshall Islands, which even if they're to have a naval base, it's, it's not, you're not really threatening anything. Now currently the Japanese have about what is it? I had it written down here. 52 air and naval units, and that is exactly what the Allies have, a combined uh, defense. So the Japanese could take a swipe and maybe take them out. They are likely not to, and that is because the Allies have a follow-up. The Commonwealth have a couple submarines over here sitting in the Line Islands, and also another submarine and a destroyer sitting up in Hawaii. And the Americans have a couple destroyers in Hawaii, a couple battleships over in San Francisco, and a couple of destroyers there, a couple of fighters, and three bombers sitting here in the Light Islands. And two of them are the B-17s, the heavy bomber, and one of them is a B-25. So the Japanese will get wiped off the map. But what do the Allies want to do? What I was just uh, referring to in terms of getting themselves in a position to force the Japanese to do something. Because if the Americans were to come here to Guam next turn um, or try and attack, the Japanese are in a very good position because they've got about 10 naval units and air units down here in this sort of southern uh, Philippines sea zone. They can link up with this, uh, this massive armada of Japanese Navy. And they also have another six destroyers uh, sitting up... Uh, off the coast of Tokyo that can join and they've also got a bunch of fighters that can go land on the Philippines for the scramble and if they do that that means they are going to definitely have naval superiority and the Americans are going to be stuck because if they attack they're going to be probably 10 units shy so they'd be attacking with about 42 units against probably about 65 or 70 so that is a recipe for disaster economies are the same so what do the americans want to do sorry this long lead-up story is i i'm just looking at the map here and i think perhaps the key might be wake island and from wake island the allies can hit shanghai they can hit or shanghai hong kong tokyo and the Philippines, and that's going to force the Japanese to spend a little bit more money back home in Tokyo because they definitely do not want to lose their capital. And they are fairly barren over here in Hong Kong and Shanghai. So they currently only have about six units there, three in each territory. Um, and then there's three units there that can come down, but they're going to have to start building. And that is going to be very tough. So... And if the Allies are sort of up here and they're sitting on, you know, an air and a naval base, um, what that's going to do is it's going to open up all of these money islands down here where now the Commonwealth, the Australians, can, can start nibbling away and capturing one or two of them at a time and doing some island hopping. 
and nibbling away at the Japanese economy. And currently they're making 101 IPC. The Americans are making 116. So, you know, it's tough for the Americans to sort of gain that superiority in the edge in units if Japanese are, you know, fairly close and only defending one territory. So that is the whole idea. And also there is two more victory cities down here in Singapore and Calcutta. So if the Japanese is up here defending, that means they are not down here defending. So that is probably what the Allies are going to do. Unfortunately, the Allies are not getting much support or help from the KMT, the CCP, or the Russians. I know CB's bill was talking about this. And that is because, well, the CCP have been wiped off the map. There's currently six Japanese units that uh, captured the Westmo CCP territory last turn. The KMT only has three units and a fighter left. And Russia's economy is now down to 10. And they've got two heavy armor on the board and seven infantry. So Japan just had, they're far enough away now that even if they were to start sort of making a push, they don't have much of a push to, you know, really make. And there are several territories away from doing anything significant in regards to victory cities. So they were basically neutered. Uh, over here in Eastern Russia, Japan controls sort of five territories along the coast. So Russia is sort of in a bit of a bad way. As you can kind of, kind of see the, the map here. And so, um, really, uh, also this J Japanese strategy here, and I've learned a lot about, uh, you know, playing with my good friend GI Joe and when he's playing Japan, uh, if he was to, you know, Play Global War 1939 uh, and when he plays BBR what he likes to do is sort of set kind of these similar traps for the allies that if you come within range they're gonna wipe you out and basically if you come with transports then you're not gonna have enough to you know you're not gonna have Navy to sort of push through and if you come with this heavy Navy um, you're not gonna have the infantry and transports to sort of take the key victory cities and the allies probably have to take two of these cities back that's going to be a large task with you know you know not that many rounds remaining so they are going to have to get help from allies elsewhere and on the on the european side of the map the germans and the italians they've decided to make a strong push for cairo and only one round in, I've learned that's difficult. And that is because the British control the Mediterranean. There's not a Axis warship there. So they are able to grab units. Now the Germans took, what is it? Istanbul last time and the Allies came and they took it back from the, the Germans. And that is because they've got naval, how many naval transports? Three naval transports that can counterattack. So any push that's coming this direction, uh, they're able to sort of wipe them out. And so the Italians and the Germans are going to have to do something about that. And they have another flank of, and it looks like an impressive stack of about 13 or 14 tanks that are coming down. But they are going to be at a slow standstill, one territory at a time. They don't have any Italian can opener. And the British over here in Cairo, they're doing okay. They've got about four units sitting here, um, another nine units sitting back in Transjordan, and they've got a minor factory that can produce three infantry a turn here in Cairo. And by the time the Germans get there, I, the British are going to have sort of strength in numbers and they can build a fortification. And they are really going to need the Italians to do some can opening to get there as soon as they can. And they're also going to need to have support of whatever units they can come from this direction. So what are they probably going to do? Well, this Navy that you can see sitting over here, that's really doing nothing other than projecting power into the Atlantic. It's probably going to have to make its way into the Mediterranean and put some pressure on the British down here. Now the British did build a naval base here in Corinth, so these battleships are going to be repaired next turn, so they're going to be more mobile. And maybe Italy starts to build some more navy here off the coast of Rome or Turin. 
but currently air forces are, are very similar in size. The Germans have one fighter, four tacticals, and four bombers, one of those being a heavy bomber. And the British have seven fighters, one tactical, and two heavy bombers. So whenever you have a large air force like, the, like both sides do, it's easy to counterattack. So, you know, you put a, a lone infantry out as cannon fodder and they send all their stuff in and they can't land their aircraft and then you come in and air blitz them and it's game over. So uh, the British have done a very good job here as well. They've got another military base sitting here in, in, in Tehran that's producing one infantry a turn. They've got another military base sitting in Upper Egypt that's producing uh, an infantry a turn. Another military base in Rhodesia that's producing and they can also produce here in South Africa in addition to the unit South Africa gets, they've also got sort of a shuck of transports that's happening here. Um, that's a that's the lone Portuguese uh, <laughs> uh, transport that survived. So it's it's going to help with the shuck to get units up uh, to Cairo. So it is going to be a slog for the Germans and the Italians to take Cairo. And if they do, this is probably where the game's going to be won or lost. If they are able to secure Cairo. That means the Allies definitely have to secure two victory cities over here in the Pacific to win the game. And that's when it's going to come down to. I have no idea who's going to win. So stay tuned for round... Is it round nine next? So thanks for watching, folks, and stay tuned.